What's going on everybody? Hey, it's Jason and today we're gonna build a Panzer fight stick hitbox for Caitlyn. That's right. She placed an order over uh, the evening last night, if you will, and uh, I'm taking advantage of this lull time I have on this wonderful Sunday to build it well ahead of schedule. Uh, <clears throat> and why am I doing that? Well, my car is actually in the shop getting some new speakers installed, uh, getting a couple things fixed, uh, in terms of audio related type things so that I can actually start using my Bluetooth and whatnot again in my car and I figured hey I got about three hours to kill let's do this let's knock it out and why not stream it while we're doing it because that's what all the cool kids are doing these days well I've been doing it so maybe not all the cool kids are doing it but I digress that's what we're gonna do we're gonna build this hitbox today it is aluminum it is white it is gonna be a pro cable install and it's going to have a broken universal fight board like everything else we do around here and it will be awesome so let's go ahead and get started today and uh, you can see here in a second I got a whole schwack of stuff on the table here so let's go ahead and change that over all right cool uh, I really need to change my stream setup it's very inefficient I'm always like reaching over things and uh, trying to get to my stream deck and my microphones all the way across the room and uh, what a nightmare i think though i did order uh some manfrotto stuff yesterday in about a week i'll have some new clamp arms and whatnot that i can attach to my c stand over here and have just one more thing that can whack me in the face as i walk in and out of this room because i uh, you guys can't see it but there is a lot of stuff that is between my door and where i'm standing right now usually boxes and outgoing shipments and random stuff that i'm running out of room for really quick but it's all good it is all good. Uh, all right, Demon Kings, welcome to the chat. What do you think? Uh, my colors are off. Uh, what do you mean? I don't understand. Looks pretty good in my stream, or at least on my my live preview. Can you expand on that a little bit, please? Unless you're talking about the stuff I'm wearing, because it's different than the, I normally wear when I stream. We're gonna wait. We're gonna see what Demon King has to say. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if it's something with my streaming setup and it going out. Because I'm looking on the screen here, and uh, what's going into the computer looks quite fabulous. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my stream and see what you're talking about. Look at that! That looks like crap. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's no bueno. I wonder, uh... I wonder what's going on there. Let's see. Let me check, uh... Let me check Facebook Live, because I'm streaming there, too. Well, Facebook Live looks like it's okay. Uh, and, yeah, it looks okay on Facebook Live. Don't mind me, I'm just, like, kind of coming in and out of frame over on Facebook. Uh, okay. No, yeah, Facebook Live looks pretty good. Let me check YouTube, because I, so I simultra- I simultaneously, oh my god, stream to both, or to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch all at the same time, and yeah, it looks like, uh, YouTube's good to go, too, so I think it's something with Twitch. Uh, if, uh, you're watching over on, uh, Twitch right now, uh, I would recommend going over to my uh, YouTube channel, and that's uh, youtube.com slash user slash angry Jason, J-A-S-E-N, uh, because it looks fine everywhere else. So maybe it's just a Twitch thing. And this is kind of why I actually stream to everything, so that uh, when one's kind of jacked up, they all look pretty good. At least maybe one of the other ones is fine. 
So, yeah, sorry Twitch users. Uh, I don't know why that's up. Uh, so, head over to YouTube or Facebook Live. I'd recommend YouTube. Facebook Live is kind of eh. And uh, we'll stream there. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so here in front of me, you see everything. Well, almost everything. We got some uh, pro cable action. We got a bunch of cables. The Brook Universal Fight Board. Love these things. The Easy Build Pro Cable up here. I got some hardware. I got a white nutrient gasket. A couple of switches. And then over here behind me, I've got the white aluminum hitbox. Uh, so let's go ahead and clean this off. Uh, and then we'll get the hitbox up here and we'll get that uh, started. Today's been an inter interesting day. We were going to get up and we were going to go about two hours south of where we live here in Japan and uh, watch or go see some early cherry blossom, uh, some early blooming cherry blossom sakura trees. And then uh, we both kind of slept in too late and we didn't do that. So instead, we spent our entire morning and most of our afternoon at Yellow Hat, which is a, uh, a car mechanic, if you will, here in Japan. Uh, my wife, yeah. oh my god, this is crazy. Uh, so yesterday, there's a mall by us. Let me rewind. There's a mall by us. It's uh, called Moore City. And it's nine floors. And on the top two floors is a bunch of restaurants. That's pretty common here in Japan. Malls have restaurant floors. And one of the things we decided we're going to do in our last year here was we're going to try at least eating at every restaurant in Moore City. So yesterday, we said, okay, let's start it and let's go get some food. So we hop in our car. Instead of taking the train, we decide we're going to take the car and just park. Not a big deal. And we get about 50 yards from our house. And then all of a sudden, the uh, we hear this loud, duh, 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 duh. It's like, ah, crap, we just got a flat tire. So pull over. Sure enough, our driver's side tire in the back, right rear, got a flat. So I'm like, OK, not a big deal. This happens all the time. I know how to change a flat tire. Easy. So I was like, you know, I've never seen the spare tire in this car. Uh, I wonder where it's at. I hope it's not underneath like it was in my truck because my Dodge Ram had a spare tire. It was up underneath the truck. So you get under there, you're unbolting it, and the thing falls on your face. It's it's a whole nightmare situation. So I'm like, well, th this car's pretty low. It's probably not underneath the car. Let's go in the back and look. We open up the back in the behind the rear seats and there's no spare tire. I'm like, well, crap, what am I supposed to do here? I, I can't leave my car here. I'm not going to call a tow truck for a flat tire. That would seem weird. And, the, of course, it's on a hill. So, like, even if I wanted to jack the car up, the jack's going to slide. It was going to be a nightmare situation. So I start looking, and uh, in the back there is this little bottle. It's all in Japanese. And mind you, I don't read Japanese. I don't speak Japanese. Um, and there's an air compressor. It's, like, this big. It's tiny. It looks like a little toy. Uh, and there is a jack and there's some tools back there that all come with the car, or came with the car rather. But uh, nothing really that I can see that's going to fix this flat tire. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I'm like, well, maybe this bottle has something to do with it. Because it has a little stem remover uh, in a little pouch with this bottle. And But I mean stem remover, I mean the little insert, the needle valve that goes inside the stem of the tire. So what do I do? I uh, pull my phone out and I go to Google Translate. And I start looking at what this is, and it turns out this is like an emergency tire repair thing. And what you do is you take the little needle valve out of the stem, you put the special cap on this bottle of white liquid, and then you just like flip it over. Well, you connect it to the, the stem that now has no needle valve, and you squeeze all the liquid out into your tire. Then you take the air compressor, you hook it up, you, uh, you put the needle valve back in, you hook the air compressor up, to your cigarette lighter and turn it on and you wait till it gets to, um, I think it's 130 pascals or 130 kilopascals, whatever it was. And it just inflates the tire. And this liquid is supposed to fill all the gaps and all the holes in uh, with like a foam material basically. So you can go about uh, 10 minutes worth of driving to your nearest tire shop and get your tire replaced. Well, fortunately, I was able to figure it out and it worked and we get there and you know, $550 later, we get four new tires put on her car. While we're there, they're like, hey, we think you need to replace the belt, and you probably want to do, like, a general inspection of the car, because mind you, this is a 2012 Suzuki Solio. It's like a little micro van bus thing, uh, and it was used. It wasn't very much money. 
And really what ends up happening is when Japanese people or Americans who buy Japanese people's cars decide that they want to, uh, are going to get rid of them, they don't take very good care of them. So you kind of get a crapshoot of this used car market. Uh, and that's what happened to us. So the tires were all kind of dry rotted and gross. I mean, we've had the car for almost two years and yeah, you know, they were probably pretty old. And uh, they said, hey, bring it back. We'll take a look at it. So we decide after we wake up late tomorrow today, we're not going to go to the uh, cherry blossom thing. We'll take the car in, get it looked at, and they can tell us what's going on. And, you know, maybe we'll get a couple things fixed. So what do we do? We get the car there. We said, hey, I think we need to do this, this, and this. And they're like, well, let's do the inspection. It's free. And I said, okay, that's great. Uh, mind you, this is all over Google Translate because English is not very common here in Yokosuka. And uh, again, I don't speak uh, Japanese. So we managed to get through it, and they do the inspection. Turns out she needs an oil change. She needs a top up of a radiator, flu uh, uh, of a radiator, new power steering fluid, uh, transmission oil, all the, all this stuff. Like, oh, it'll take about an hour. About two hours later, it's finally done. And I, I, while I was there, I was like, hey, my front speakers don't work, and I don't really feel like dealing with it because there's like 150 screws that hold the door panels on on my 300ZX. And uh, I'm like, hey, I'd like to get them replaced, whatever. And they're like, yeah, sure, no problems. So I bring it up, and they're like, and I was expecting to have to make an appointment. And they're like, okay, great, we'll take it in the pit and we'll start doing it. I'm like, oh, shoot, we're going to do it now? I'm like, yeah. So um, after we, so basically what ends up happening is Rihanna, my wife, her car comes out, my car goes in, and while it's there, I'm going to have them do the transmission oil flush as well as replace all the speakers, well, the two, front two speakers in my car because they're going to charge me $40 to do it. And I'm thinking to myself, $40 for them to take three hours to do it or me cussing and swearing at my car for six hours in my tiny garage because I have never taken the door panels off my Z before. $40 well spent, I think. So they're doing that now, and uh, I think three hours, definitely enough time to stream, get a Panzer built, and talk to you fine fellas and ladies on Twitch chat. So yeah, it'll be all good. <clears throat> all right. So in any case, uh, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for indulging me on my car woes and fun stories of the the day wasting my day getting cars fixed and looked at uh but at least now we're here we're building this hitbox and uh caitlin will be happy with it i hope all right so what you can see here i'm just attaching the feet right now i always like to attach the feet first just because uh i don't know it's just kind of my process. You don't have to do this. You can do it last. It doesn't matter. Um, she did not get a bottom pad with this. I kind of wish she would have. I always like putting the bottom pads on these. Um, I think uh, I've got some interesting things coming out for the Panzer. I'm very excited. I don't want to tell anyone, but uh, anyone who has uh, been a... I'm not going to... I don't want to say loyal. That's not the right word. Anyone has been who has been a Jason's Customs enthusiast or has followed the work I've done over the last, oh my god, eight years uh, with the fight sticks, uh, specifically with the Panzers, you're going to see when I do uh, actually show everybody what, the, uh, what I've been working on, you're going to be very excited because it's going to be reminiscent of uh, a number of variations of the fight stick. Uh, that I've made over the last eight years, and uh, I think uh, it's. It, I don't think it's gonna be polarizing, but I think it's gonna raise a lot of questions. And it's a stepping stone because I've actually got two versions in the works. So we'll just leave it at that. But don't wait to buy a Panzer if you're looking to get one, because there's a whole lot of manufacturing that uh, has to go into uh, getting these done, and. Uh, a whole lot of prototyping that needs to go down. So it needs to happen. Tyler, welcome to the stream. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate you sharing uh, that Sailor Moon hitbox. Uh, I showed my wife, and she was super excited. That's the first photo of anything I've shared for Jason's Customs that she's actually liked uh, because she's a huge Sailor Moon fan. Not the game, just the anime and the manga. I think we've got a whole volume of them in storage, plus a whole new volume that she's picked up since we've moved to Japan. <clears throat> Alright. We'll separate the top from the bottom, and we're going to just set this, the bottom off to the side here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys sharing uh, pictures of Panzers with everyone everywhere and anywhere that you can, because 
Uh, it definitely helps me. I love the uh, exposure and I definitely appreciate it. And um, it helps bring that to other people who may be getting my stuff confused with other people. <clears throat> All right. Whew. So first thing we're gonna do, like I always, I actually do this second on every single build because it's just easier to do it now, is to install the pro cable or the USB adapter because, hey, it's just the, it's, this is the best time to do it. You have the most flexibility to kind of, you know, get in there and do things. Maybe when I go back to the auto parts store to pick up my car, I'll get another adjustable wrench because I totally need a second one and I've just been putting off buying it because I'm never, I'm never in a place that sells tools because I never really need to go buy tools because I have everything. Konnichiwa! I forgot, I forgot to say, uh, how to say uh, how are you doing in Japanese. I apologize. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get these plates installed, like so. Yeah, like that. This is gonna look pretty good when it's done. I like all white builds. Uh, although this is gonna use clear buttons, not white buttons, and that's okay. Genki Desuka. Oh no, I'm sorry. Genki Desika. The U is always, it's silent. Oh, very exciting news. I'm super excited about this. Next weekend, for the first time ever, I'm going to my first SMO match. I'm very excited about this. Um, and then the weekend after that, I'm going up, uh, shoot, where are we going? I forget uh, the name of the town, but we're going to see the snow monkeys. I'm very, ex I'm very excited. Very excited about that. So, yes. Very excited to go do some more uh, Japanese culture stuff in my free time. We've been meaning to go see a SMO match for a while, and it's just it's something always is coming up. Oh, we gotta do this. Oh, I gotta work. Oh, she's gotta work. But we finally made time for it, and I'm super excited to go see the SMO. And for those of you who are not in Japan, uh, sumo. We're going to see sumo. Um, my understanding is the U sound is not something commonly used. It's in words, but uh, native Japanese speakers don't speak it, or don't say it, rather. So, that's why. I'm saying it like that. I try, I'm trying to say things like a proper Japanese speaker would, when I can remember to. <clears throat> but yes, so we're gonna go see Smo, uh, Smo next weekend, and then there's another ticket, that she, uh, a show she wants to go see, and uh, in Shinjuku, there's this thing called the Robot Restaurant, and it is hilarious. I love it. I've been a couple of times, and um, uh, my wife has never been, so I'm excited to share that experience with her. Uh, oh, okay, so Tyler uh, talking about he and Melissa wanting to plan their vacation out here, uh, trying to decide Tokyo or Kyoto. Not, so I will tell you, you can do both. My very first trip to Japan, we did both. We spent a week in Kyoto, and we spent a week in Tokyo. Um, when we were in Kyoto, we did go to Osaka uh, and Kobe uh, for a day. Uh, very easy, and then we took the bullet train uh, to Tokyo, and uh, then we went, uh, we did the stuff in Tokyo. So you can do both. My parents are actually coming in April, and we're going to do basically that same thing with them, because I want them to be able to do a little bit of everything. And I would say there is some cultural stuff here in Tokyo you can do as well. You got the Imperial Palace, the Shinjuku Gardens, all that stuff, but you also have all the cool, fun, like, you know, trendy Tokyo things to do as well, like Shibuya, uh, Shinjuku, Akihabara, um, 
if you come at the right time, you can go see a smo. You can, you know, maybe see the cherry blossoms, etc. So uh, you can do a lot of good uh, cultural things here too. Cooking classes. We've done a. I've done one of those here. My wife has done a couple, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, ah, nests. Ah, konnichiwa. Welcome. Welcome to the the stream today. Oh, that's not working. That's the wrong bit. Oh, the arcade monitor in a speaker box. Wait, did you see my arcade monitor in a box? Because I've totally built that. Uh, and I have one. It's in storage. It weighs about a thousand pounds. Um, but I did it, and I really like it. And would I consider a tutorial for it? Yeah, absolutely. I would just need to get another arcade monitor to do so. It's actually quite easy. It's not really hard. I just built a box and put some uh, wood uh, framing in it so that the monitor had something to bolt to, and that was it. It's pretty easy. I mounted the power supply and everything on the inside, so it was, you know, very, uh, a very easy thing to do. <sighs> that would be a that would be a tutorial I'd have to wait to do until I move back to the U.S. Uh, I don't have any woodworking tools here. And the woodworking tools I do have access to, it's on base. Uh, and I don't know that uh, they would let me bring a bunch of cameras in there. And I don't know that I'd want to bring a bunch of cameras in there. Uh, much easier to do in my own home. Uh, but yeah, going back to the robot restaurant, it is, in my opinion, and I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, so if... if my interpretation or characterization of the robot restaurant for Bubbles or Nests uh, or uh, any of the other Japanese viewers out there is wrong. Please let, let us know in chat. But when you see kind of the bright lights of Tokyo and some of just the uh, what we in America would consider the over-the-top things that we see in Japanese anime or manga or their TV shows um, and just like the just the wacky humor that uh, is different than ours in Japan uh, the robot restaurant kind of does all of that in one and it to me is the epitome of just like all modern weird funky Japanese culture and I love it I absolutely love it and everyone I have ever taken has said, this is the weirdest thing I've ever been to, but I love it. So, there you go. I, uh, <laughs> I would highly recommend that you check it out and try it if you're coming to Japan. Specifically in Tokyo. It only takes like an hour or so. It's in Shinjuku. There's a little bunch of other cool stuff in Shinjuku to do as well. Um, so, yeah. All right, so what we're doing is we're just getting the little switches hooked up now and uh, getting the front ready to go. So, uh, kid, one of the uh, uh, one of the things I think I had a write up at one time on my web. I had a blog that has since come down because it just didn't want to pay for the hosting anymore. Um, I actually had the plans for the uh, box that I built and a lot of pictures of the uh, arcade monitor in a box that I built uh, up. I wonder if maybe um, the uh, Wayback Machine can find it. Um, if so, maybe you can find it on the internet still. <coughs> oh, this electric screwdriver nest. Yes, this is great. Um, I think it was 30,500 yen and I bought it at Holmes right here in Yokosuka. I know there's homes everywhere, so uh, it comes with, uh, it's got a quick disconnect, and it comes with, I think, four different screwdriver bits. So there you go, I would recommend it. And um, I think Holmes had a couple of them. This was the cheaper of the, the bunch, but you can feel that it's still decent enough quality. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a great addition, great addition. Oh, all right. One of the other things I got to do this weekend is 
uh, make a determination on who is going to be the new brand rep uh, for Jason's Customs. I put out a call on Twitter and Facebook uh, for people to contact me if they wanted to become a brand ambassador, and I was going to give them a free Panzer fight stick. And um, uh, they uh, got a bunch of inter uh, interest, and I've actually had a few people respond back with the, the information I've asked for. And I'm very excited about it. I think there's a few strong candidates in there, and um, I think uh, uh, we're going to be able to come to a decision on that this weekend. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, okay, uh, Christopher, quick question. How heavy is the Panzer fully built compared to current fight sticks? Um, let's see. Well, the Panzer itself, just the case, the steel cases, are about 8 pounds, plus or minus a little bit. Um, the aluminum one's 2.5 pounds. So I would say that... They are a little bit meatier than most, and a little bit heavier than most. Unless you're buying an aluminum case, then they're a lot. They're probably lighter than most. Um, but I do that because I like to use thick metal. Uh, I've noticed that some other companies use metal that's thinner than mine. Fine, it works. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, there's a balance between weight and uh, durability that uh, I think we've found kind of in the middle with the. Uh, the thickness of steel and or aluminum that we've made. But again, hopefully in the next month, I'm gonna have some interesting things that are gonna help you really adjust the weight of your Panzer quite nicely, if you know what I mean. So, stay tuned. Ah, okay. All right, now let's see. Oh, we gotta get some buttons. Uh, we do have those. Yeah, we're gonna use these. This isn't no, this is not useful, but eh, that's useful. Mmm, nice clear sand was. <clears throat> All right, so we grab six of those. I really love being here because I can call um, uh, Suzuki-san or uh, in at Sanwa and say, hey, I need some buttons, and they'll, they can be here within a day. I love it. And those guys are awesome. The guys at Sanwa are great, super easy, and really, really good to work with. Um, it'll be better when it's easier to get a few things uh, that are only special edition or have been designated uh, limited edition for certain shops for a little while, but <clears throat> it's all good. I uh, understand why they do it, but it's all good, whatever. Because if I could do it, and I could buy 10,000 buttons, I would do it too. Oh, all right. So what we're doing now is we're just going to, we're getting the, the auxiliary buttons all hooked up. I always do this after the switches and after the uh, USB connector. And with the hitbox, I always bias the pins so they're closer to the deck or the table when uh, you're building it, so that that way the easy build board sits on top pretty nicely. Uh, also, uh, so Tyler, you didn't mention earlier um, the uh, Discord. We have a Discord server, I have Discord chats. So if you have not uh, joined my Discord, please do so. It's in my uh, bio on Twitter, and uh, I should probably make it like one of those little fancy chat things up uh, here, or maybe adjust my theme for my uh, my uh, Twitch chat here that has it as well. Um, it's proven to be quite the useful way to communicate with everyone in real time, and it has also proven to be a huge time suck for me because I get, I'll get wrapped up in conversations actually quite easily, uh, which is fine. What's up, dog? Misha's decided to come say hi to my neighbor's home. You can hear his sport brakes on his WRX STI squeaking. <clears throat> All right. All right, so that's all good. So let's go ahead and just pull these in like this. Yikes. There we go. Cool. And I always bend the pins a little bit like that just so that they're out of the way. All right, 
we're going to do the same over here. One of the hot button topics over at uh, the 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 uh, Discord is when am I going to release the wireless stuff, and uh, I'll show this off. This is something I designed right when the board came out, and I was waiting to get some my hands on it to do some tests. Uh, we got some antenna mount options coming out. Plus, I got some other stuff that's not quite done that I'm excited to show off, but we're going to have a pretty sweet kit available for the uh, wireless board, and unfortunately... Brooke is super way behind, and I may not get wireless boards until March or April, which is not great, uh, all things considered. But I'm going to keep pressing. So Tim in Austin, come on, guys, help me out. Uh, because I think having some of these with wireless inside is going to be sweet. All right. So now what we're going to do is get this out of the way, and we're going to go ahead and install the Universal Fight Board. No hovercraft attachments, Tyler. No hovercraft attachments. We already have a uh, an unfortunate stigma that Panzers are way too expensive. I can only imagine how much in, how much it would cost to install a giant mat with <laughs> with a big fan underneath of it. screws. We're going to need all of them. Hopefully the music in the background is not too loud or distracting. Um, I was using, I've been using Pretzel uh, because apparently it's stream and YouTube save music. And every time I stream with their music playing in the background, I get YouTube demonetizing all of the video because apparently it's not free. So I need to, uh, I need to uh, probably stop paying them using them because it's not really quite as, you're not paying for you're not getting what you're paying for, and that's kind of frustrating. So, if I'm going to get demonetized because of audio, I should probably play better music. I'll just play a bunch of Street Fighter soundtracks or something. <sighs> All right. A couple other good new things coming is I think I'm going to be hiring a couple people. Uh... And by hiring people, I mean like long-term contract hiring of people. There's some stuff that I want to do for the business that is, uh, it's not difficult to do, but I find that it's difficult for me to be able to do it uh, at intervals that I want to do things. So specifically, I'm looking to probably hire kind of like a social media, social media manager type of person and uh, uh, probably looking to expand my, my relationship with uh, P3G3 on uh, graphics. Um, here in the future as well. So let's take a look at that. That looks pretty good right there. I think the, those clear buttons look pretty sweet. <sighs> Alright, so let's go ahead and install uh, the uh, easy build here. Let me get some of these wires hooked up. See here that of course nothing wants to play nice. It's all good. So, yeah. Nope, that's not my size.
Oh, cheap decommissioned air hockey tables. Oh yeah, that might be a place. Uh, there and actually, it's pretty funny that you say that because there is a place called Coin Op Warehouse in Maryland, um, and they sell uh, all sorts of fun stuff like old arcade cabinets and stuff like that in varying states of repair. And I've actually bought a couple things from them over the years. Um, I don't have any of it anymore, but um, they do actually have those. It's pretty easy to get a hold of. Int funny, funny enough. Alright, that's that's all in there pretty good. Just tuck some of these wires underneath the easy build just to hide them. Like this. Cool. Alright, that's pretty good. I forgot a screw. Better put that in. Forgot two. Good. All right. So there you go. Most of our wiring is actually already hooked up now. So that's uh, very convenient and easy. I love the easy build system. What a! I'm gonna pat myself on the back. What a great idea. It's. Uh, it was funny because I, I did the easy build system because I wanted to be able to offer people build out services um, a lot faster than I was able to before. I had to artificially limit how many I offered people or offered at the same time because uh, um, it just it was very time consuming and I got I would get burnt out after making one or two of them and I'd need to like take two weeks off just because uh, you know working a full time job and doing this part time uh, it. It takes a lot out of you, um, and when you're sitting there fighting with, you know, making wiring harnesses and builds, you know, eventually at some point you're like, all right, I need to take a break, and I didn't want to do that for the customer, so I thought, okay, what's an easy way to make this fast? I'll make, I'll design something to make it fast to build, and here we are. All right, so there we go. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that so far. <sighs> Let's go ahead and clean this off. Just make sure there's no dust, debris, etc. down here between plexi and the face of the stick and we'll get our plexi this will be clear we just got to pull the brown paper off all right so this is probably going to be mostly off camera just so i have an easy way to get to it actually maybe i can do it up here so i always start in the corner here like so Perfect. And then I just simply peel it away, keeping my fingers off of the exposed plexi so I don't have to worry about trying to clean it. One of these days I'm going to get some tempered glass because that's going to make life so much easier. And it's so much easier to clean than acrylic. And it'll only cost like $500 per piece. I'm almost sure of it. Ooh, this peels real nice. And I say it and it stops peeling nice. All right. There we go. Ah, uh, can we get it? Can we say? Oh, almost. Saved. Good. All right. Now we're just gonna lay this down like so. There we go. I heard something that sounded like a piece of dust. You get very in tune to that <laughs> the more of these, the more you build these. All right. And as per the usual, I like to get the screw in, and I don't tighten them all the way down, uh, but I get them all started so that that way 
the plexi is held into place without moving around, and then it's protected from movement and scratching on the underside <clears throat> while we connect all the little wires to our buttons. So now we need uh, 11 24 millimeters and one 30 millimeter here, which is no problemo. Let's just grab that from behind us. Now we have the tedious task of just installing all these little harnesses. And it's not hard, it's just, there's a lot of them. Sounds like my wife is watching a documentary about Taylor Swift. Which, she, I mean, she probably is. random bings from the computer behind me. exciting documentary she's watching apparently oh this is the most tedious part of any build I hate doing this it's not complicated it's just I don't like it I really do like Sanwa's new like uh, pushing buttons and I'm actually getting harnesses made to that put that on this end and this on this end so that I can uh, offer those in the shop because quick disconnects are a pain in the butt I hate these things I mean, they have their time and place, and they serve all of us very well for many years, but I just like the idea of click fits and everywhere. It's just so much easier. Every once in a while, you get one that's a little slippery. Just gotta get the needle nose out. Not a big deal. Perfect. Finally, the last one. Goodness gracious.
Now, the uh, the next thing. Uh, no, they're not new push buttons. Uh, these are just Sanwa clears. But uh, Sanwa did release the switches. They're replacement switches. They're, they're still the SW68s. But instead of having the little tabs, they have a, um, uh, a JST connector. It looks kind of like this one here. It's a little bit smaller uh, that you just push, push into and it clicks into place. And then on the other side, for traditional builds, it has uh, little spade terminals that you would plug your harness into. Well, because I designed the easy build to have quick disconnects on the one side, I can get custom wires made that fit into the, their house uh, plus my housing, and then it's just click, click. No more dealing with quick disconnects like this. So uh, those are in production now. Uh, they're going to be great, but they're not quite ready yet. Uh, okay, so now what I like to do is I like to stand the fight stick up like this uh, and install the buttons. But if I do that right now, I'm going to be screwed because i got to take the plexi cover off first. So why don't we do that? And just like we did with the bottom side, start in the upper corner here, like so. Get a start carefully. All right, like so, and just peel it like this. And then once you get it clear of the screw head, you can go ahead and screw the screw head all the way down. And it left a little residue back there, so I gotta get it out. It didn't peel as cleanly as I'd hoped. There we go, now it's clean. Perfect. And we'll continue our peel. Now it's not as important to not touch the plexi because you can clean the side very easily. There we go, we got a, almost a clean peel there too. That one's clean. Alright. I'll just continue to go. Now, I'm purposely trying to avoid touching the plexi because, you know, the oil's on your hands, and this is going to a customer, so, um, I mean, I will clean it, obviously, before I package it up, and I'll probably get some fingerprints on it anyways as I wrap it in the bubble wrap, but, you know, you want to try and keep it as clean as possible. There we go. So we got clean peels on most except for this one and this one that we had to clean out, so not too shabby. <laughs> I actually have a bunch of sets of the brown ball tops and buttons, actually. Right here. I got a number of these. Oh no, I opened it wrong. There you go. I have a whole setup. I actually have a number of setups. So if anyone wants a set, shoot me a message because uh, I could definitely make some room in my home shop. All right. I think I have probably five or six sets too. pretty good no major dust particles anywhere it's funny on screen these screws look black they're not black they're, st they're just the standard silver ones uh, okay so like I said earlier I like to stand the case up on its side when I'm installing buttons uh, I don't know why it's just something I've always done and um, 
The tabs, I always like to go horizontally. And by horizontally, I mean along the long face of the case. Because then the wires bend over nice and easily. It's really funny to me, these San Juan buttons, I love San Juan buttons, but there is an interesting thing going on with their mold, I think, um, because the clear buttons tend to run a little bit big, like just a smidge over 30 millimeters and just a smidge over 24 millimeters. And then even within like their lineup, Occasionally one runs a little small or a little bit bigger. I've actually had fight stick builds where I've gotten to this point and I started pushing the buttons and they're a little, just a little over molded and the friction of the case uh, going through, you know, the hole being just a, you know, the standard size I use for all of my builds was compressing the housing enough on the button that the plunger would get stuck down. And then I'd have to take the whole thing apart and replace just that one button with a different one. Right out of the same box, no problems, uh, and it would fit. It's just a, it's a weird, a weird thing. All right, cool. That looks pretty sick right there, yeah? What do you guys think? I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, finish plugging everything in. And you'll see that I don't put a lot of force when I'm installing these. What I rather do is kind of wiggle the connector so it clips into place. Uh, that way you're not stressing the circuit board. It's like when you're building a computer, you don't mash down on the motherboard when you're, you know, with it on its standoffs. You try and do everything on the box outside so that the motherboard circuit, the PCB on the motherboard is uh, supported. You don't get any micro cracks in any copper. Because that is a thing that can happen. All right. Boom. All right, there you go. And that build is done. Now all we got to do is test it and update the board. Uh, yes, these allow for artwork. There was no artwork installed here, but you would just put it between the plexi and the case, uh, and it would sit there fine. And then additionally with the buttons, if you wanted inserts, you can pop the caps apart and then put them over the little white caps. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. I do say so myself. This is gonna be a good looking build. All right, it is a good looking build. I So I don't think Sanwa is gonna be releasing the Browns um, until very late this year, if I had to guess, uh, I think they're gonna. They brought them to Tokyo Game Show. Uh, I thought. I think they brought them to Evo uh, last weekend. Last weekend, and then I think they're gonna bring them to Japco, uh, and then maybe they'll release them. But I've asked to carry them in the store, and they have said no. They said not until uh, late 2020. So that's where we're at. Because I also wanted to get um, the new um, the new uh, um, the new uh, metallic ones, the blues and the the uh, reds, and they said no, <laughs> only only at uh, Japco uh, and Evo. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do, and this is always like the most not like oh my god moment, but. This is where you're going to find out whether you have an issue with the build or not. So let me uh, see if I can to adjust the camera. Let's see. I'm going to come over this way so that I can talk to you guys while I'm doing the update. Uh, so first thing what I like to do is I like to go and test the controller. 
Uh, and I use joy.cpl to do that. Uh, it's just a Windows control panel item. Uh, and it's great because it lets you basically test every button on the fight stick. And you guys can't see that because you're only seeing the one screen. Let me uh, let me change which one it is. No, no. There we go. All right, we'll just put that here off to the side. <clears throat> All right. And so we go left, down, right, up, no problems, then buttons. Yeah, that all works. All right, my lock switch is locked, so let's go ahead and unlock that. Okay. All right, no issues there. And we're going to take it out of the left stick mode, and we'll go into right stick mode, rather. Okay, good. And we'll go in the other way. And just like that, it's done. All right, good. So we're very pleased with that. Let's go ahead and close this. And then close that. Uh, no, I can sell the ones I've got now. I just had to pay retail for them. Uh, so there's a little bit of a mark up there. But yeah, I have a set. So like I said, if you want them, shoot me a message and we can work something out. Not a big deal. I have five or six sets. I've already built my stick using them. So I'm happy. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, updater here because I always update the stick before I send it out. Uh, and let's see. I think I can kind of stretch out and do this. Uh, okay. Oh, let's see. The Brook software always takes a long time to open. That's all right. I think it's downloading the... Uh, the uh, update every time it opens. Eh, I guess my little shortcut quit working. Lame. It's all right. Oh no. Is Brooke's website down? I hope not. All right, let's see here. Uh, PS plus share and select. So what I'm doing is unplugging, holding, plugging back in. That didn't work. Oh my gosh. Ah, okay, apparently it was working. Stop. No. Uh, Panzer Fight Stick 3i completes kit back in stock. It's out of stock? Let me check on that, because I've got plenty of cases. I've got too many cases. Ah, there we go. All right, cool. And, oh, good. You guys can see it right here on the screen, too. So let's go ahead and hit start there. Oh, no. Crap. I wonder if Brooke's website's down. That's why it's not working. Hmm. That's no great. That's not good. I'll try and open it up again. I will find out about the kits and why it's showing they're out of stock because they're definitely not. I got plenty. I'm going to just check Brooks' website. Yeah, their website's up, so that's good. So I have I've gotten in the habit of updating the Brook Fighting Board every time I build one, uh, just to make sure it's got the most recent um, firmware on it. 
but I don't think they've actually had to do a firmware update in a while. Uh, I think Sony kind of gave up on uh, fighting them for... Uh, I think that Sony gave up on fighting them breaking the controller updates, probably because they're focused on the PlayStation 5 update in release. Uh, no, Brooke isn't failing. Just the updater is failing, and I think there's an issue with the with their website or the server that how. Yeah, that's weird. Something uh, to do with their website. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to leave a note for uh, for um, for the customer on this to tell them to update the board because their website was down. Um, let me just go ahead and open up Joystick Show again, just to make sure. Yeah, all right, good. It's still there. I just... All right, good. So I, I think it's probably going to be okay, and there's not going to be any issues. This is a brand new set of book, book boards that I recently got. Uh, so they should have the most recent firmware up to date on them, so I'm not terribly worried about it. But it does stink that their website, or at least their server's down. So I'll have to shoot Tim an email and uh, say, hey, man, just a heads up. And it could be down for maintenance. I don't know. I know with all the stuff happening in China right now, although they're in Taiwan, hopefully the all the craziness that's going on in China hasn't leaked over to Taiwan and they're not fighting through the uh, coronavirus over there too because uh, that wouldn't be great. Uh, not for anybody, really. But This is the one downside to having updaters that require an online presence uh, and talking to a server because when the server goes down, you're kind of screwed. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move the camera back over now. All right, I'm gonna deal with that, deal with that. All right, cool. Uh, so this build is for all intents and purposes done. I'm gonna just disconnect the cable here. <clears throat> then the last thing, of course, we need to do is put the bottom back on. So let's do that now. I don't think uh, I don't think anyone's gonna want their fight stick without pants, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and just line this puppy up. Slide her down into place like so. Give it a quick, uh, I, I, I always do this. I'm like, oh, I'm in the middle of building it. Clean it, clean it, clean it. Keep cleaning it. Um, and then we'll grab our screws here. Like so. And we'll just go ahead and reinstall everything. Uh, the six, uh, four screws, or eight screws that hold them in. And you guys don't need to see this because it doesn't do anything right now. We're going to go ahead and close that. Sorry about that, guys and gals. Mm. Man, this thing is so light. These aluminum cases are great. And I think we can call this one a success and done. Yeah, no, th so check this out. Those tabs, you're bending the metal. And that's not cheap metal, so it's not going to break. I mean, if you're sitting there doing this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, yeah, you're going to break them. But you just bend them over a little bit. It's perfectly fine. Uh, I've never had any issues with it. Uh, so I can 100% say that's safe to do. <laughs> All right. So, there you guys go. There's the, uh, the nice uh, Panzer Fight Stick hitbox out of aluminum. Maybe weighs two and a half. I guess with everything in it, it's probably three pounds. But, uh, yeah, that came out really nice. Uh, I think she's going to really enjoy this fight stick when it's done. Or when she gets it. It's done, obviously. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I always like building these things. I do have, uh, like I said earlier, um, I am going to be selecting the uh, I'm probably gonna pick two uh, entrants from our ambassador program uh, to represent the brand over the next year and I think uh, uh, we'll probably be opening that up to more 
based on uh, people take their time to uh, provide the inputs. Now, I'm going to just leave everyone with this. I've worked very hard for the last eight years building my brand, and I've put the work in. Um, so when I want to when I want to work with people, the people the kind of people I want to work with are the same kind of people um, that have a kind of a similar mentality as me. And I want them to work hard too. Uh, and the way I can validate the work ethic is by the submissions uh, that I require to be part of the ambas um, the ambas oh my god the ambassador program. And what I mean by that is it's almost like a resume. Like, why do I want to pick you to represent the Panzer Fight State brand? Um, so I asked them to put together some metrics on their Twitch streams, how many YouTube followers they have, uh, Twitter followers, etc. Uh, how often they go to tournaments, where they place, how often they place in those those high uh, um, those turn uh, how high they place in those tournaments, and whether it's a frequent occurrence or maybe a one off. Um, give me the links to all their social media stuff because I want to make sure that. Uh, um, I'm dealing with someone who shares a common ideal and value set as me and the rest of the FGC because uh, I don't want someone who's just going on random tangents that aren't related and are going to hurt the brand. Uh, so I asked them to put together uh, a basic brochure of why I should select them. And I will tell you that I've had probably 50 people reach out and say, hey, I'd, I'm interested in becoming an ambassador. What do I have to do to get that free Panzer? I uh, send them the information. Uh, and it's a it's a generic write-up I've given to everybody saying hey this is what I need you guys to do what I need you to put together for me so I can make a decision and I will tell you that about five people out of 50 have taken the time to put together something and send it to me uh, and I think that kind of speaks volumes as to the commitment people are willing to put forward um, and the amount of work they're willing to do uh, to get a sponsorship and it's both interesting and frustrating for me um, because I feel like a lot of people just want things to fall in their lap and they're not willing to put the work in required and that may be a little cynical I'm willing to accept that but like I previously mentioned, I want someone and I want people to work with me that are willing to do the work as well. And part of that is selling yourself. And part of that is saying, hey, this is what I can help you with. And this is why I think I'd be a good choice. Just Twitter messaging someone or just Facebook messaging someone with a, hey, I'm interested. That's just a foot in the door and opening it up to, all right, let's have a conversation. So... Those are some of my observations with this. It's almost been, I don't want to say it's been a social experiment within the FGC. It's definitely not been that. This is a legit deal and I'm, I'm really excited with a couple candidates uh, that I've had an opportunity to read through uh, what they've provided me. But it's also very telling. It's also very telling. So if I, if I could encourage you guys looking for sponsorships, do the work and market yourself. This is like a resume. You're asking someone to give you money, products, etc. Uh, and they need to be able to verify that the ROI, the return on investment, makes a lot of sense. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, it may not always be monetary, it may just be exposure. In this case, for me, it would just be exposure to continue to sh show off the, the Panzer Fight Stick brand and the builds, etc. with people. Um, but it could also be, you know, it, it, I look at it as an opportunity to help out up-and-comers as well with some high-end gear that maybe they can't afford on their own, but they're doing the work, going to the tournaments, and they're willing to you know, show, hey, here's what I've got and here's what I can offer. And believe it or not, the people that I'm looking at consent and at giving this free panzers to is they're not people with thousands of followers on Twitch or Twitter or whatnot. Um, they're actually some up and comers, people who travel locally and uh, people who are genuinely excited about the fight sticks uh, that they use and specifically the panzer. Um, and, uh, again are willing to do the work so I, I would encourage you guys if you're thinking about seeking sponsorship put together a sponsorship package look at the video I posted that's just some general ideas of kind of what I'm looking at and that's not the end-all be-all uh, but I, I think it helps present yourself in a way 
that makes you more attractive to people and it demonstrates that you're willing to put the work in uh, to make the partnership work and last um, so yeah I'll leave those with those words with you and it's probably gonna ruffle some feathers I mean if it, it would be different like if I went up to Diego and said hey I think you're great here you go please use this let me know what you think um, that's a different and a unique situation and a unique case um, again same thing with Li Joe I gave him a stick for free and he's actually bought a couple cents um, but again a unique situation uh, unique different um, than an up-and-comer so uh, and it, it actually reminds me of a story uh, from Evo 2016 when I went uh, and I was at the arcade shop booth with those guys I was building panzers off to the side and helping people upgrade their, their fight sticks and whatnot and this young woman came up to me and she said hey would you be interested in sponsoring or our organization and that's all she said and I, I was like well I'm always interested uh, but I need some more information what do you guys do and she's like oh we do this this and this and a couple things were f uh, fighting game related and I was like okay well what about some metrics what can you show me why would I want to work with you and she was like she was kind of taken back like well what do you mean why would you want to work with us I'm like do you have a sponsorship package anything like that and she was like uh, I'll have to get back to you and she went off and about 45 minutes later she came back and she was like yeah I talked it over to our partners but why would we want to work with you and I was like that's not how this works you approached me I didn't approach you um, you tell me why I want to work with you give me some metrics give me some a resume if you will and I'll tell you what I'm willing or, or able to help you with because I need to see where my business fits in with your organization and she wasn't willing to do that and they were they came back to me and it was like a very very kind of a standoffish like well how dare you ask me to prove to you why I should want to work or you should want to work with me it was just very odd uh, and that was very telling to me and um, I, I think people don't realize that you know esports and whether you want to call fighting game tournaments and locals businesses etc uh, it really is I mean it's a professional you want a professional organization and you have to treat it that way and that goes to everything with uh, again you know bringing something to the table saying this is what I think we can do for each other this is where I think we'd fit well and really thinking through it not just shotgun blasting out to everyone saying hey I want to work with you I want to work with you I want to work with you because inevitably that could work you might get a couple people interested but in my opinion you want to build strong relationships with somebody and with another organization and you have to make sure it's the right fit uh, I wouldn't want to partner with someone who does smash tournaments because my fight sticks don't work with smash uh, I wouldn't want to partner with someone who runs Madden tournaments because no one uses these for playing Madden um, and you know if if someone came to me like hey I've got a team of five guys or five people rather not guys sorry um, I want five fight sticks I'm like okay well tell me some more stuff I'm not I don't want to give it to someone who's just gonna sit in their home lab and use it all day uh, because that really gives me no exposure for my stuff either and that's again it's a partnership thing so uh, if you're out there looking for sponsorships or you're thinking about uh, asking people I, I'd, I'd ask you to, to demonstrate that you're willing to do the work up front and show the metrics show why uh, a company would want to work with you tell them why you think you'd be a good fit um, because that is going to speak volumes to you as a person and uh, your work ethic and what you're willing to do uh, for that brand that you want to promote or work with so yeah I'll leave that with you guys uh, but in any case I hope you guys did enjoy uh, watching this build and coming and chat with us uh, with me rather tonight uh, I always love doing this kind of stuff and uh, I'm gonna get this packed up now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this shipped out on Tuesday my time Monday y'all's time uh, to uh, Caitlin and uh, I hope that she enjoys it as much as I enjoyed building it so until then I guess I'll talk to you guys later and uh, peace out.